So I'm the I'm the writer of Lotec magazine. It's a blog that um, I started um, more than ten years ago, and I I badly needed a, a redesign of the web because uh, yeah, one of the problems it was not um, accessible on a mobile phone, for for example, um, and that. Uh, I've always tried to practice what I preach. So what I try to do with Low Tech Magazine is to um, kind of criticize the high tech approach to sustainability, and then um, for as an alternative, I look to the past for inspiration. So I go see how how people used to do things, how how they made stuff, how they transported themselves, and and how they transported goods, everything before they were fossil fuels or earlier in the 20th century. And it kind of um, brings you to a lot of um, uh, ideas. Wait. So, um, yeah, for instance, the compressed air um, is maybe a sustainable alternative to um, chemical batteries. In um, for for energy storage, and then you see if you if you go look into the history, then there's like hundred years of history into uh, compressed air, and it was used as an alternative for electricity, and um, yeah, from that you can kind of um, get a lot of inspiration to make new solutions. So my my aim is not to go back to the Middle Ages or start using old technologies, but more like what can we learn from it and how can we improve it. So, for instance, you have uh, old technology, you can improve it with better materials, better knowledge. Um, uh, for example, pedal-powered pedal uh, machines. So, oh, this is... A, yeah, I'm used to work on a very old computer, so... Uh, so, for instance, human power is very is very old uh, energy source, and uh, but like early 20th century, we de developed a lot of uh, new uh, kind of um, ways to convert human power into um, into useful energy. For example, the, the the bicycle is one, but also the, for example, here this article. Uh, you have to. Um, there appear machines like uh, human-powered saws and drills and everything, and then, um, yeah, so you kind of, an old concept can be improved with new technology. And so I needed a website, and I thought, okay, then I need to build also a low-tech website. I'm also not uh, flying, I'm not uh, using cars, I don't have a smartphone, so uh, very often people tell me, haha, funny, you write about low-tech and inspiration from the past, but then you're using the internet to kind of communicate your message and of course what what else can I do if I start photocopying uh, text and nobody's gonna read me so I thought let's try to um, um, kind of make a website that is uh, that uses very low resources and it also um, it was not the plan yeah I'm sorry I'm a bit chaotic but I didn't really prepare the talk because this was uh, not foreseen um, so uh, the um, And it's Sunday morning. <laughs> so um, last summer I had an intern coming from the United States, and she uh, had the the job to kind of redesign the website. And she, I think, she showed me like five or six designs that all looked really great, very modern. And every time I was like, hmm, yeah, nice, but I don't really feel it. And then at the end of the summer, she came with a design that I immediately fell in love with, and I was like, what? What's that? And she was like, it's the first website ever made. And I was like, okay, that's what we need. And um, so in the end, although my kind of, my intention was not to go like back to the history of web design, but apparently that's again where the solution was. If you want a solution, always look at the past and you will find it. So in the 90s, they made uh, static websites and um, Today it's all about, uh, yeah, it's all database-driven uh, content management systems. And uh, yeah, they use much more resources than a static page, which is just always there, while a dynamic page has to be uh, generated all the time, every time someone visits it. And so we, we kind of um, 
continued working on that idea and um, if you make a static web page, you can um, it can be very uh, low energy using and to certain ex to that extent that you can actually host it yourself at home on a, a very small uh, server. It's the Olimax A20. You see it here. Um, so it the whole website now runs. I have to <laughs> I have to hurry because it's almost so. This is the battery meter, the yellow line you see here. So it's, I guess, at 1%. You don't even see it anymore. Um, so the server uses between 1 and 2 watts. And uh, that's, that's low enough to host it yourself. Uh, and also, I was like, OK, I should run it on uh, solar power, because I forgot to say that. Also, my office is on solar power. Here, so this is my office, and I kind of took it off the grid. So I have like uh, 50 watts more or less of, of solar panels, and that's where I uh, use the lighting and the computer. And uh, kind of uh, depends on the weather whether I have enough energy or not. Um, so because I kind of limited myself with it's quite a small solar system, but it's Barcelona, so it's very sunny. Uh, on sunny days, I have more than enough energy to kind of work on my computer, uh, turn on the lights. Uh, when it's cloudy, I have to kind of adapt. So I use like a tablet with a keyboard or I use my typewriter, which is a great uh, invention. I don't know if, if you know it. <laughs> so I will show a typewriter for those who've never seen it. Um, yeah, so I kind of discovered even the typewriter, and um, there's also a lot of reading to do. So yeah, if you have to read a book, you just need uh, three watts of a LED light, and you can uh, work the whole evening. Um, also, I noticed that the energy use of your computer depends a lot on what you're doing. So when you're, uh, for instance, writing, just like a text document, then I, I consume around 15 watts. If I'm researching on the internet, it's like 25, 30 watts. So you can kind of adapt to, to the sun, to the weather, actually, and try to kind of arrange your work. And you can always cheat, of course. You can always go to the library or, in my case, to the living room because it's just a solar office. But still, it kind of um, uh, works. I never do that, actually, but <laughs> I could do it. But um, it kind of, I learned that it kind of works to adapt to the, the weather, to kind of, um, yeah, I mean, it's not so strange that people uh, adapt to the weather. We also go skiing when there's snow, we go to the beach when it's sunny, we go windsurfing when it's windy, so I work when it's sunny, and um, I don't when it's cloudy. <laughs> So I would not work a lot here in Berlin, I guess. <laughs> so I'm kind of stuck in Barcelona. Um, so yeah, but I decided, OK, let's power this thing on uh, solar. And I put this solar panel up here at my balcony. So that's the balcony next to the, uh, to the picture you saw before. And um, then I also added a battery. But then the problem with batteries is that um, like, OK, solar energy is great, and we should switch from fossil fuels to renewables, but it's a very different uh, energy source. So it's much, um, yeah, it's not always there to start with. There's no sun at night. Uh, there's m much less energy when it's cloudy. And if you want energy, solar energy, to be always available, you need to add a lot of batteries. And, and if you want, like, 100% reliability, which is, like, the uptime promise of most uh, web hosting services, like we're 100% online or 99.999, uh, then you need quite a big battery because you have to be ready for even a very unusual, say, a whole week of clouds, which is uncommon in Barcelona, but it does happen. And then actually your choice for solar energy is not so sustainable anymore because you need this big battery uh, that maybe lasts three, four years, depends how you use it. and then. You need another one. It's uh, very expensive and it's not sustainable. So this whole idea of uh, solar, uh, we switch from fossil fuels to uh, to solar and wind energy. 
I support that, but you also have to adapt your society to that. Your lifestyle and your technology should be ready for um, a, an energy source that's first intermittent and two, has much lower power density, which means that you need much more space and materials to harvest the same amount of energy. So then I was like, okay, um, I use the same uh, strategy as I do in my solar office. It works. Um, when it's sunny and it works through the night because otherwise yeah, people in other countries would not be able to read the site uh, while they're during the day. Um, but if we have one or two cloudy days of weather, it just uh, it goes down and then people have to come back. And to make it easier for... Um, so yeah, in the end it's a very small battery it runs on, I will show you. These think pads... Uh, were much better before. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that's the controller. Yeah, here are the batteries. So it's a bit complicated technically in the sense that you have a server that runs on 3.7 volts and you have a solar system which is based on 12 volts. So you have to kind of uh, convert and then, um, which is not very efficient because you lose uh, a lot of energy in the conversion. But this big battery you see, I mean big, it's very small, but uh, the biggest one you see, that was meant to be the, the energy storage, but the, and that's like the uh, UPS uh, battery. So this small battery is actually meant to um, shut down the computer uh, orderly when, when the power goes out. But in the end, we just decided to run it on the small one, and this just serves to, to convert the voltage. So this 24 watts, um, so I kind of like it, yeah, it's one cloudy day and then probably next morning it goes offline. But then we also help people to, um, to plan their visits to the site. So first we say like, look, watch out, this is a solar powered website. Um, check, watch the battery meter, which is now almost uh, like gone. And then here you have um, the weather report, which is very important, of course, if you're depending on the on the weather. So today, um, yeah, it's a cloudy. Of course, red weather reports are, are not very uh, reliable. We all know that. Um, yeah, it doesn't look too good for the next days, I must say. And then here you have the power statistics of the server. Um, so load average of the CPU and everything, the battery charging, so it's not, the panel is not active, so it's probably raining or cloudy at the moment. And then how much uh, energy the computer uses. Um, when we were still building the website when the word got out, and uh, we suddenly got the hacker news crowd over, uh, um, yeah, while well, it was still uh, kind of in the scaffolding uh, phase. But, um, it immediately showed how how uh, how powerful this old kind of type of uh, building websites is because we got like uh, I don't know 30,000 visitors in in two days in one day and um, it worked fine and the CPU uh, uh, load average was only up to 30 percent so you could actually run three uh, high traffic websites on a on a server like this. And so how did, it, did we get it um, so, um, so energy efficient? Well, the, the easiest thing to, because if you look at the website, what is, what is using all the energy, then you see that it's mostly the images. Um, and especially on the Low Tech Magazine, which is a very visual uh, website, it um, kind of would have been easy to, um, yeah, like this, there's like a lot of, images in oh, lots of large images and the easiest way to to make a very low uh, resource website is to just get rid of all the images because then yeah it's basically uh, not consuming anything anymore but that would not have been a good choice as the visuals are very important part of the whole magazine so we kind of used uh, um, a dithering uh, technique that's an, an old printing an old uh, technique from the printing where they uh, kind of uh, you kind of um, yeah I'm very bad at explaining the dithering 
Um, but you you take away. Um, wait. It becomes. Uh, yeah, good idea. Mm. This? Oh, the German keyboards. <laughs> All right. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wait, let me just. <laughs> Ask Google, where's the Z? Ah, here. All right, here we are. So, for example, here you see the original. So, dithering, um, you kind of strip it, the, the image of all the colors, and it gets these like little um, kind of uh, crosses. That's what it becomes. And then uh, you give it a supporting color. And that's what they did in uh, like comics and, and magazines in, uh, yeah, in the 70s or something. And it's not the only way. I mean, we could have um, kind of, so we managed uh, the average picture. We made it like 10 times lighter. How, uh, because when you look at um, the, um, the evolution of web pages, the last uh, 10 years, for instance, the, the average web page is now three times heavier than, than it was 10 years ago. So there is a trend towards ever uh, increasing uh, page sizes. And I, I, I didn't realize myself, but my old website that you see here, I, I was a, 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 an offender. I mean, it, this is like the SUV or of uh, websites because I had a lot of pictures and I never really thought about resolutions or I just uploaded them. And then when I started for, for this project, I started measuring them. I was like, oh my god, I'm like three times above the average web size. Um, so eight megabyte, nine megabyte for, a, for a, just one page. And we got that down to, I mean, our, 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 limi our limit was one megabyte per page. So we wanted everything to be uh, below uh, that. And that really worked. We are now like an average of 0 0.6 megabytes and on average by uh, page. It also loads extremely fast. That it's not, uh, it was not really the intention. So we didn't build it for uh, speed. We build it for low energy uh, use. So if you would run this uh, solar powered website on a normal hosting web hosting company in a more like central location of the internet, because Barcelona is really the outskirts, yeah, it would be even faster. It would be like in just a few milliseconds, and you you have it. Um, we did also other things, so we didn't uh, lo we don't load any typefaces, so we use the default typeface of the browser. So it looks different depending on your browser. You don't have to all these requests to to take in the, uh, typefaces. And um, so yeah, I did actually none of this. I worked together with uh, Marie, who who did all of this. But th that's why I'm not very good at explaining the technical stuff. Um, we also got rid of all the tracking, so um, I get very annoyed when I visit the website. First they say cookies, yeah, I accept cookies, then the newsletter, no thanks, no newsletter, and then uh, some privacy warning. We got rid of all of that, and um, it's not just annoying, it's also using extra energy. We also got rid of the, of the stat counter page, so on the, on the old website I have a stat counter to see who's visiting. And now I'm basically, um, yeah, I have, of course, the server stats that you can, every server has its own statistics. But there's also a little light blinking on the, on the, on the server. You see it here. So I'm basically sitting in my office and uh, I see how much traffic there is on, depending on the light blinking. And uh, one evening I was like, yeah, that's, by the way, how we discovered that we were already discovered because suddenly this light was blinking like crazy and it's like huh? <laughs> so, something's happening and then that was hacker news and another time it was uh, someone trying to take the website down and so you immediately see uh, what's going on um, 
yeah, that's a bit the story of the website. I probably forgot a lot of things, but um, so you can read all about it on the blog when it's online. And but now I want to go a bit deeper into the um, the story behind it. I mean, the thinking behind it. Oh, I'm afraid it's down. <laughs> So, <laughs> um, so then we go to they kind of took over the Apple kind of um, ma mouse pad, no? In this new uh, type pad, uh, think pads. Very annoying. Um, Here we are. So, so we we still keep the old blog online. Um, that's like you see, read the article on the Solar Power website, but it's not possible now. <laughs> um, we we keep it online because we're still kind of um, working on the on the Solar Power website. Not all articles are uploaded, and in the end, we have to decide. Yeah, we're gonna keep two separate blogs. That's not very practical. Um, so probably this one will disappear or they will be integrated in uh, one block. Um, we're not sure how to do that yet. Um, so this is like um, the critique on the, the, the thinking behind uh, renewable energy, what I said before, like uh, the idea is we just switch to uh, renewable energy uh, sources and then it's solved. But you have to adapt your whole uh, society. And if you look at the past, you see exactly that that was happening. So uh, before the Industrial Revolution you also had uh, a lot of renewable use of renewable energy but it was in a it used, was used in a very different way and uh, so on this picture you see uh, two good examples it's the sailing ship and it's the wind powered factory. And uh, this is both from the Netherlands because that's a country that was really focused on wind uh, not so much on water because it's too flat and uh, so how did they run uh, an economy on renewable energy that is not always available? Um, well, very simply actually, they, they, uh, they operated their, their factories and they operated their transport system when there was wind. And if there was no wind, they, they just didn't run their factories or they didn't uh, travel overseas. Um, and it kind of... It's a very simple idea that has been working for centuries and, and if you think about it, it's something that we can also do and we can do it much better actually because, uh, for example, if you look at uh, sailing ships, yeah, we have much better uh, sailing ships, we can build much better sailing ships than we did in the 1600s. Uh, we have better weather reports, we have better navigation instruments, we have better um, we have better overview of the currents and the and the winds over the the whole globe uh, that was actually just discovered before um when the steamship already took over we only then we charted the whole um the all the currents and the and the winds uh, globally and just simply that knowledge allowed to to half the sailing times across the globe um Yeah, I have the feeling I'm telling the story backwards, but uh, we can also do it with solar power. It's not just uh, wind, because uh, so you, we have a lot more technology than we did before. So in the in the late 19th century, they started to concentrate solar light and then operate. For example, this is a printing machine, that uh, a printing press that is uh, powered by directly by the sun. So it works if the sun shines. If it stops it just uh, stops and um, there is no uh, need for batteries but it's also a much simpler technology so uh, there's no conversion to electricity and that's another thing that uh, we can learn from the past is how they w w if we talk about renewable energy it's always about ah, yeah, wind turbine solar panels they make electricity and then we use electric appliances but uh, this conversion to 
electricity and then back to, for example, mechanical power, uh, has a lot of uh, losses, energy losses in the process. So you can also do it directly. You can uh, connect a mechanical uh, windmill directly to uh, the axe of a machine, and you also have uh, you can drill or saw or, or polish or whatever you want. And all these basic operations, uh, factory operations, they, they are still just as important as they were uh, before. So the Dutch also used their old windmills not just to, to grind grain, but also to do every basic um, material processing that is still uh, very important. So, um, yeah. yeah, for instance, this is a sailing ship. Just one example to to see how how much uh, sailing has improved. The, the top speed of a sailing uh, boat in the 70s has tripled. So in just 40 years, we managed to to make sailing ships like three times faster. And this, of course, is not a very practical um, ship to cross the Atlantic or um, to kind of take some containers. But still, it's a, some it's a design that you could kind of think further and maybe uh, a new kind of make it much bigger and into a cargo uh, thing. But what's especially interesting is here the the guys on the bikes. So in a, in a normal sailing ship, you need a lot of people to uh, do the steering. And these guys, it's in a race, they were like, okay, we ju we're going to save on manpower because we are, we're going to use stationary bikes. And because they're more efficient, so one person can deliver more power, uh, you need less men on board, or women, and um, so you, you save a lot of weight. And they, yeah, of course they won. And now probably everyone is going to take over these, uh, this technology. Um, yeah, I keep uh, talking in a chaotic way, but that's fine, I hope. Do I have more time? Okay. Then I want to introduce another. So talking about human power, I kind of uh, remembered the other project. So with a with an artist in uh, the Netherlands, we're building a human power society. So like I said, the the human power has been throughout the ages. That was actually the backbone of the economy. So if you're talking, all the canals in Europe have been uh, dug by hand with a shovel and um, yeah today we have like one of the latest things I, I encountered was the the battery powered pepper mill I don't know if you know it it's like you just press and then you have pepper so that's 2018 we were digging canals three centuries ago and now we cannot even uh, <laughs> Yeah, and then I actually found it at my parents, so I asked why why you buy this, and then they were like, yeah, it's quite um, handy because you only need one hand, so there's always a kind of convenience uh, advantage. But then uh, at the next visit, it was gone because I was like, and it was replaced by a, a, a human-powered one, but not one that goes like this, but that you have to uh, knappen. I don't. Yeah, maybe it's the. German word also. So you only need one hand. So it's kind of, uh, and why they replaced it, they were like, man, this is eating batteries. <laughs> That's such a, like, yeah, great. And so it kind of shows that you can also uh, solve it without adding batteries. You can also think, make things more convenient. And all this human powered um, technology, it basically evolved over the centuries and then it stopped in the early 1900s and then we never looked at it again. So all this old, uh, um, how, how to use human power, we, we kind of lost 100 years of opportunities in, in making it better and more efficient. And that was the starting point to kind of uh, ask ourselves the question, um, could we run a modern society on human power alone? And it sounds a bit like a silly question, but actually the interesting thing about human power is that if, if the users of the energy are also the producers of the energy, uh, then the first thing you're going to do is think about how much do we need? What do we really need? I mean, um, so for instance, uh, we our first scenario was a human power student building. So, um, yeah, to, to be clear, it does not exist. But it kind of we we uh, made detailed detailed calculations, 
and we made images and then we actually uh, put it on the um, yeah <laughs> so this is the entrance it kind of changes the world a bit but and the people so this is for instance a, a individual uh, student room and it was surprising that by switching to human power you kind of it's first of all it's perfectly doable you can have a modern life in a building with 750 students uh, entirely human powered because human power is very uh, yeah you have uh, you can produce mechanical energy you can produce electricity in that process you produce a lot of body heat so you also have heat and you can also use human waste to uh, for the bi producing biogas and what you see here for example this you have to keep an eye on the pipe so if it's cold, it can be cold in the Netherlands, that's where the building is. So you just open the vents of the pipe, or you plug in your, your bodysuit, and the heat comes from here. Um, so, <laughs> this is the fitness floor. We have three fitness floors on, on, at the bottom of the building. And this is, uh, yeah, like in the old days, there's music. It's like the work song. People used to kind of uh, sing while they were working to coordinate their actions and also to kind of keep motivated and to complain about the boss and everything. And um, so we have three floors of, of uh, fitnessing people. Part of the 750 students have to uh, keep the building working, and that produces so much body heat that you can then actually warm the, the, the students who are not working at the moment. You can warm them with the body heat of their colleagues. And um, yeah, so it works. Um, and but the, the thing is, like, yeah, of course, we got rid of the stairs. So the stairs are usually very boring places. There is no one, not in our building. They are teeming with life. And uh, it takes 11 minutes to walk up to the first floor, to the highest floor. Uh, so we calculated really everything. It takes three minutes when you run, but then you have to be in good fit fitness. And uh, because, the high, because there's no elevator, the highest rooms are uh, the cheapest rooms. And we actually... Um, put some ads on the on the internet on the student uh, room website like hey human powered website um human powered uh, yeah the human power website that's for a future project um human powered uh, student rooms for say uh, for rent uh, in 24 hours we had 60 people uh, saying yeah great i want to be there <laughs> so we took it off that was not really what we expected but apparently there something uh, is attracting people in the sense that they um, yeah now they have to spend a lot of time doing a job to pay the rent and they also have to go to the fitness to keep in shape so they thought like okay if I do this I pay less rent and I already have my fitness so I kind of uh, I'm better off um, but so the thing is then well, how much energy do we need? Because uh, the shower is one good uh, example. So uh, we we figured out how much, how long do people shower, and that turns out to be increasing throughout uh, every year. It's getting longer, and people now start showering twice a day. And but the average is now seven minutes. And then we were like, okay, um, how are we gonna? Because the body heat is not high enough to kind of produce that uh, hot water, so we have to do it with electricity. And then we found out that if uh, everybody wants to shower seven days, uh, uh, seven minutes per day, that basically the whole student population, 750 people, need to produce power the whole day, and and then shower and then power the whole day. <laughs> so that makes no sense. And then we took it down to three minutes, but it was still too much. And then in the end, we found, okay, one minute kind of works, uh, because then we still need 150 students producing power for eight hours a day. So it's still quite a workforce to uh, earn your shower. Um, on the other hand, if you want to take a cold shower, that's basically free, because you just need to pump up the water. That's not so much energy uh, use. It's all in the heat. and. But the interesting thing is, because people are much more active, um, 
they they are not cold and um, so uh, if you if you go on your bike and you cycle for an hour in in winter in berlin and you come inside and there's no heating you're gonna be warm for one or two hours because your body is just producing much more heat and the same with the shower if you have been uh, exercising for three or four hours then the last thing you need is probably a hot shower you might be happy to have a cold one depends on the person of course but um, so it kind of human power becomes a kind of solution to everything and um, so the whole student building that that kind of that's a project that's uh, over now this is the biogas yeah you also have one shift in the biogas plant that's what everybody hates <laughs> and um, yeah the, the the food is important of course like um, so to research this project, we went to have a, we went to the fitness ourselves. We never did it uh, before, and um, yeah, we got to know all these bodybuilder guys, and they were eating this uh, all these powder things, and then we discovered it was a waste product from cheese manufacturing. So it's actually so we started a cheese factory in the Yum Power Building, and then we have cheese and we have the the protein shakes, which are great to uh, to produce power. Um, because if you do it wrong and you, people eat like, I don't know, a, a beef steak from Argentina all the day, every day, then, then human power is not sustainable anymore because then you're producing more carbon than, than if you would use grid electricity. And um, yeah, so this we made a, a schedule and we found that with like three hours of power producing per day, we kind of, we have like one minute shower, uh, you can use computer, you have lighting. So you kind of are okay. Uh, I mean, you could say it's a, it's a modern life. It's not that we are in the dark, that we are just uh, communicating with uh, with yeah, pen and paper, and um, and then you have the biogas and the cooking. But that's this is a very busy week, so normally it's not that busy. But also, we have uh, as you can read sustainable decadence on the roof. Because, um, yeah, the thing is that it's a human-powered building, so it can operate on human power alone, and it's, uh, we have reduced energy so much that it, it keeps working. But because we did that, um, it actually also becomes possible to power it with wind. And by just putting, uh, we have 10 of these kind of mini wind turbines on the roof, and if you would do that on the building uh, with a normal energy use, yeah, it would not work at all. It would not be enough uh, energy. But in this case, uh, every time it's windy, the students uh, don't have to produce power at all, and uh, the wind turbines take over. And um, so that's great. Then we can do all the things that are forbidden at other moments, with jacuzzis, uh, big uh, computer screens, uh, television, computer games, git electric guitars. Um, and the other way around, it's uh, you're using wind, but you don't need the batteries because the batteries are actually the humans. So they they take care that if there's no wind, you don't need chemical batteries. You just need um, yeah people working again. And we did a, yeah, that's a bit the whole building. So there's the biogas plant in the basement, three fitness floors, shower, communal. So it's important to do everything together. Not everyone has their own kitchen, not everyone has their own shower. Okay, um, yeah. And the next, uh, we're now building on a, a human powered hospital that kind of raises a lot of other questions like, um, yeah, what medical treatments can we afford? and that kind of stuff. So yeah, I will, uh, I will stop because... Thank you. Well, thanks Chris for this very entertaining and enlightening presentation.